Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be drawing finger labyrinths. Um, and for those of you that don't know what a labyrinth is, it's kind of like a maze that we are going to create. Um, and Waylon wanted me to let you know that this was his idea. So if he decides to watch this video, then he knows that I'm giving him credit. Um, but yeah, so basically, we're going to draw our labyrinth together um, and then we'll go through it and I'll kind of tell you some of the benefits of a labyrinth. Um, I use it mostly for um, when you need to center yourself. So if you're feeling very anxious and you need something to focus on that's not the thing that's making you anxious, you can kind of use your labyrinth to do that. It really helps um, kind of bring your attention to something that's not whatever that's stressing you out. Um, so really good if you have anxiety or if you just have a hard time focusing in on one thing, it's kind of helpful. Um, and yeah, I thought it would be kind of a fun challenge for us to draw together. We're going to take it nice and slow uh, and we're going to draw the whole thing together step by step. Um, so again, if at any point you need to pause the video or rewind or whatever it might be to keep up, that's fine. Um, as always, do what you need to do. But yeah, so I'm going to show you um, what a labyrinth looks like to begin with. So this is what we're making. Okay. And it's lots of steps, but we'll do it um, one bit at a time and then hopefully uh, it'll go as planned. Um, so the first thing that I want you guys to do um, oh, also, I'm going to do it every step in a different color, but you guys are welcome to do um, all the same color or all pencil. Um, if you do it in pencil, it's easier to erase if you make a mistake. Um, so completely up to you, but that's the reason that I'm doing multiple colors is just to break up the different steps. Um, so the first part we're going to do is I just want you to draw this cross on your paper, okay? So everyone go ahead and draw that cross. You can draw it in the middle, um, but notice that a lot more of our labyrinth is up on top and on the bottom. So if you wanna draw it closer to the bottom of your page, um, that's fine. Again, you can make it work for whatever. So we're gonna draw that cross. You can do it as big or as small as you like. The bigger, you do it kind of just the more room you have between the lines. Do it nice and big and thick. Okay, so something like that. And then we're going to draw these little L's, these little corner pieces. Okay, so it kind of follows the lines of the cross there, okay? So go ahead and do that for each one of them. Again, no such thing as being perfect or having things completely even. Okay, so you should have something like this. And then we should be ready to start drawing all of the lines of our labyrinth. All right, so pause the video if you're not quite here. Um, but if you are, then uh, we'll continue on. Okay, so I think the easiest way for me to do this I've turned my page around so the top of my page is facing me so how you guys are viewing it should be um, like if you guys were sitting here at your own paper. Um, so this is the top of my page um, so if you were standing here looking at it it would be the right direction. Um, hopefully it works out that way. Um, so I'll just do mine upside down so that it is kind of easier for you guys to tell. Okay. So we're gonna start with our first line. I've got my blue marker here. I want you to draw a little hill from the center of the cross to the top of this L. 
You can do it as big as you like. Just know that everything's gonna kind of keep going around that. Okay, there you go. All right, then we are going to go from the top of this L all the way to kind of, I made a little dot, I don't know if you see it, right about here. So this one isn't going to actually attach to anything. You're gonna go up and around to here. Okay, so I'll draw it and then I'll let you guys see. Okay, so see that one doesn't actually attach to anything. There's a couple of them that will draw that don't fully attach um, and I'll make sure I let you know when that is. But it pretty much lines up with the blue one. That one, mine went a little bit further, but it should line up about where the blue one ends. Okay, so that's your second one. All right, our next one is also going to not fully attach and it's going to end on this side. So I'll draw a little dot. Okay, so mine's gonna end there and it's going to come from this this uh, L from the bottom right here. So it's gonna come around, it's gonna go a little bit out, up and around and end there, okay? So I'll draw it for you out, around and up, kind of like that, okay? Ready for the next one. It's a bit of a tedious process, but it'll, it's kind of a different project for us to do. All right, so our next one is going to come from the corner of this L, and it is gonna come around or out over top, and it's gonna attach to this part of the X, or of the cross, okay? So it's coming from the bottom of this L, out, up and around, and attached to this part of our cross. Okay. There you go. Next up, we are going to be coming from this side. So we're going to go from this part of our cross we're going to go out up and around and we're going to attach to this part of our L on the bottom okay so again come from this part out up and over and attach to this part of our little corner piece all right so out There you go. Good, we're getting there. Okay, so our next one, I'm gonna do an orange. We're gonna start from this corner piece. We're gonna come out, up, 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 around. And this one isn't gonna to attach to anything. It's going to end right below where the pink one ends. So I'll put a little dot there so I know where I wanna end. Okay, so you see that dot? So I'm gonna go out from here, yeah, out from here, up, 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 and over, and then end right there, okay? Good. I hope you guys are hanging in there still. Our next one is also going to not attach to anything at the end. Um, so we're going to start at this corner here and it's actually going to come down, around and over 
and it's going to end right about here. Okay, so we're coming from this side, we're gonna go down, across, over, and end right about there. So I'm just having it end underneath that orange one. Ready, down, Here we go. And for our very last one, we are going to go from the bottom of this one. It's gonna go down, across, over top, across, and it's gonna finish at the bottom of our cross. Okay, so starting here, down, over, around, across, finishing at the bottom of our cross. Okay? So you should have something that looks a little bit like this. I had to kind of cut mine off a little bit because of my writing, but like I said, that's fine. Um, and there you go. You've drawn your finger labyrinth and now we got to figure out what we're supposed to do with it. All right. So I want us all just to go through our finger labyrinth together. So you're going to take your finger, you're going to find your entryway into your labyrinth. So you've only got one entryway and that's right here. Excuse my blue fingers, we were using food coloring today um, in class. But, okay, so found your entryway and I want you to go through your labyrinth. So you should go in and then you're gonna follow the lines, you're gonna follow the axis. So it goes around, back this way, goes around, this way. Up and over, around, up and over, up and over, up and over, and you find your way to the center, just like that. Now I don't know if you notice, it's really hard to think about anything other than what direction you're going during that time. So like I was saying, it's a really good way to just kind of focus in on something that isn't the thing that is giving you anxiety. Um, you can also do this from the inside out if you want. Um, I find it easier going from the outside in, it kind of centers me, um, but whatever works best for you. So if you were to go the inside out, you'd start at the middle or at your end point, which is where this blue part is here. And you would just follow your way Back out. I already lost my way. Back out. And out. Um, so yeah, it's a really good way to kind of distract yourself. Um, I would suggest also practicing doing your breathing during this. Um, it's a good way to kind of bring yourself back to a new state of calm. And lastly, I would encourage you guys after every time that you go through your labyrinth, um, just write down a few positive affirmations, um, depending on what you are needing at the moment. Maybe th those are simple things like, I've got this, it's okay, um, everything will be fine, um, or more self-esteem based positive affirmations, such as I am beautiful, I am great, I am awesome. So take a second and just write a few positive affirmations depending on what you feel like you need in your life right now and then we will come back to close so you can write them wherever you like around your labyrinth you can leave lots of room for future ones to write um like i said you just need to write like two or three two or three ones for now and then every time you come back to it you can write a few more um 
But yeah, go ahead and do that and then we'll come back. All right, so there you have it. I've got a few of my positive affirmations that I have needed to hear. Um, and like I was saying, you can continue to use this labyrinth in the future and just add to the positive affirmations on the outside. Um, but yeah, that is everything for this prompt. Let me know what you thought about it. If it was, if the instructions were clear or if they weren't clear, just let me know. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, Waylon hopes you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you guys again on Monday.